that you've had a good meeting with the Prime Minister. Sorry that my schedule is such, but at least that you've had a chance to say hello. Oh. Okay. All right. Is it, I understand the schedule correctly, it's going to be a four month? Yeah. Is this no, it? This is, this is it. This is it. Yeah. Good. I'm not sure. Prime Minister was just explaining he's had some rather remarkable success in the economy in the last few years, and owing basically to the same principles that you're trying to reestablish here in this country. Oh, I know. I know we have much in common that way. Well, what is it that we have? No. Oh, all right. Uh, the President has another commitment right this moment, but uh, perhaps we can. Yes. Discuss these things and convey them to them for you. Yes. Oh, good. All right. They met me. Are you going to tell them? Are you behind the shot? Oh, thank you very much. Yes. strange to me that among the non aligned, those who've chosen the opposite course, yes. why they can't look at all of those of you who have who have done differently and how much better exactly. you are than they are. Quite so, quite so, quite so. Now in our case we have taken very meaningful steps to correct the economy. We have used to be for over two thousand five hundred years when we were self sufficient in everything. And as you know uh, we were a subject place for Years. And as a result, we lost everything. Yes. We are not asking for charity, but we are asking for a deal because uh, as well, it's still in there. Uh, uh, we must be true to accept if they can realize that so we are not going to have an opportunity. I'm sorry I can't participate in this. Our Congress has come back, and right now, oh, with budget and all, I am up to here. <laughs> trying to persuade the Congress to do some things they don't want to do. But uh, it's good to be able to see you, and I appreciate having thank this. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. All right. I'm going to take a picture from Sri Lanka. Oh, all right. Can you take a message, Shekhan? Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you again. Before we begin the meeting, we thought it might be helpful to go around the room, Mr. President, so these uh, individuals could identify themselves to you, since they are strong supporters. I'm sure you know many of them. And I know we're going to have a chance for individual yes. greetings and some picture taking at the door when the meeting is over. Yes. I'm Edward Duffy, Chairman of the Wingo of the Frank Porter, First Bank System in Minneapolis. Joe Morris, Columbia City, in Boya, Kansas. John Sullivan from Kansas City. Guy Brickfield, Mr. President, the American Association of Retired Persons. Jim Weiss, Notre Dame, Blue Mark. My bank. I'm going to say this. Lee Strauss, the Commerce Bank Chair of Houston. Bob Douglas, Chase Bank, Mr. President. Don Platt, Chemical Bank, New York. Dave Barr, from Mountain Bank. Iris Dependian, back to Boston. Jack Evans, Manufacturers Center, New York. Fred Martin, also Bank of America. Mary Ford Fitzgerald of Columbia Associates. Harold Shadden, First National Bank in Salina, Kansas. Well, I'm grateful to all of you also for coming here. Um, such short notice, and when I remember about when my own banking was done in California, I couldn't help but remember Danny Thomas, the 
famous comedian who after he had made it big in Hollywood was speaking one night and he was expressing his appreciation for what uh, the community in California had done for him. He said, I've achieved such success out here. He said, when I came here, I only had $65,000. And he said, I'm now proud to say I own two, owe 287. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, as you know, withholding is coming up in the Senate soon. And I want to not only the opportunity to thank you for your support, but to plead for more. We spent a lot of months around this table figuring how to fashion a budget that was fair and, and balanced. And one thing I needed to get the budget cuts that we must have was a revenue component. And if I turn around now and give up the revenue side, the rest of the budget is, is jeopardized. And we could lose the spending cuts we need, the tax cuts that most stimulate business, and we'd send a signal that I'll back down when the going gets tough. I don't I like to think I don't have a reverse gear. But, uh, that's why your support's important to us. You can help get across a message. We're defending a principle that those who owe the taxes must pay their taxes rather than asking those who are paying their taxes to pay more. It's not just a problem of reporting, it's a problem of collecting. And withholding is the most effective collecting, collecting method that we have. Collect taxes uh, just through reporting is workable. It would require as much as a 200% increase uh, in the audits. And we want less, not more, IRS involvement in people's lives. The only other alternatives are higher deficits or new taxes. And I know you don't want either one of those any more than we do. I'm determined to resist the pressure in Congress to go back to big spending and to increase taxes uh, to the people. The Congress presently, and particularly true in the House, is looking for ways to spend more at the same time that they're bemoaning the deficits. And I just can't step aside now and let the issues go because there's political opposition. So. I'd like to hear your point of view, and I hope that with the recovery beginning, we can continue to cooperate on positive actions that will stimulate growth and, and prosperity by keeping spending down and lowering interest rates even more. Uh, it's, we were told over and over again, uh, there's some gentlemen we've met with on the other side of the fence, uh, on this issue that uh, oh, it wasn't their position, they were on the <coughs> voice in the position of the people. And I still, in spite of what they said, tend to believe that the bulk of the people truly don't understand this, have been misled, and somehow view this as a new tax. Uh, and uh, so we would appreciate anything that you could do in, in helping to, uh, to bring the attention of the people that what we're trying to do is catch those neighbors of theirs that just aren't paying what they owe. Am I supposed to be a spokesman? I don't know. I just walked into the room and all of a sudden I was a spokesman. Because <laughs> you got to yell at me. They're not as big as the ones now. <laughs> no, I think that uh, you've got the white hats in here as you <coughs> might guess. And very other, many other distinguished personalities in this group. I don't think we have time to go around and introduce everyone, but I've explained to them that we have 15 minutes for this meeting and you're very busy scheduled. Well, I want to sincerely thank you for your attendance and willingness to hear our position on the interest in withholding legislation. As you know, the issue is coming up in the Senate as early as Monday. We spent months around this table. <laughs> figuring out how to fashion a budget that was fair and balanced. But in any budget cuts, uh, I felt we had to have a revenue component also. And if I turn now and give up on the revenue side of the budget, the rest is jeopardized. We, we did lose spending cuts that we need, and uh, we could lose more of them. The tax cuts that stimulate business also could be lost, and we did send a signal that, or we would send a signal that I would back down when the going gets tough. 
that's why your continued support is important to us. You can help us get across a message that we're defending the principle that those who owe taxes must pay their taxes, not those who are paying taxes already pay more. It's not just a problem of reporting, it's a problem of collecting. And withholding is the most effective collection method that we have. And to collect taxes just through reporting isn't worth it. That would require about a 200% increase in audits. And we want less, not more involved with the IRS and people's lives. The only other alternatives are high deficits or new taxes. And I don't think you want those any more than we do. And I'm determined to resist pressure in Congress to go back to the old ways of spending and increasing taxes and, uh, and increasing spending. The Congress is looking for ways to spend more, and I just can't step aside now, let the issues go because there's political opposition. I hope that with the recovery that's beginning, we can continue to cooperate on positive actions that will stimulate growth and, and prosperity by keeping spending down, lowering raise interest rates even more. And uh, now I think we'd like to hear your thoughts. Mom, why don't you speak first if you never lost the word? <laughs> <laughs> dedication to justice under law for all our people. I could have picked a happier day than the 15th of April. <laughs> <laughs> there. May 1st is... We're making a better use of it than the Soviet Union was. <laughs> Emphasize that difference, doesn't it? Uh, yes, I think so. And a good way to do it. Now, the story about the difference between our two societies goes clear back to World War II. Uh, that was an adjective of an air base. I used to slip the general orders under the blotter to read at the end of the day because they contained all the citations. So, one day, I have a story that I never forgot. But several years later, the Soviet Union gave its annual gold medal to a man, but they don't give citations. They don't tell you what he got it for. Uh -huh. And uh, I did a little work. He was a Spaniard, a refugee from the Spanish Civil War. And then I found out he'd been in Cuba for several years. And then I learned that before that, he'd been in Mexico for 23 years in prison. He was the man that buried the pickaxe in the head of Leon Trotsky. And all those years later, they give their highest award for the murder. And the, the story that I had remembered from the war was a B-17 coming back from the war of Germany, all shot by the enemy aircraft. The ball turret underneath the side of the plane had taken a hit. It was jammed. They could not get the ball turret gunner out. And he was wounded. And out of the channel, they began to lose out. They had ordered bail out. As they started to leave the plane, the kid in the ball turret realized he was being left behind. And he cried out, understandably, in terror. The last man to leave I saw the captain sit down on the floor of the plane. He took the boy's hand and said, Never mind, son. We'll ride it down together. The Congressional Medal of Honor posthumously awarded. And one society gives a medal for it. murder of a man that will give his life just to bring comfort to a boy who has to die. 
to all of Americans and set an example sure. for the world and particularly the American public in as following a regular fitness program on a daily basis. And we'd like to present this award. This is the Man of the Year Award. It was established in 1977 to recognize outstanding individuals like yourself. And if I can get my glasses out. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> <laughs> chopping wood is better than working out. Yeah, I guess so. Man of the Year, APFC, to the President of the United States of America, Ronald Reagan, for his contribution to promoting fit, per, physical fitness for all Americans, presented by the Association of Physical Fitness Centers, 1983. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Greatly honored and very proud, and I thank you very much. Thank you so much. You know, you look so good, you could almost be one of the board of directors. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I haven't noticed it. Some of you would not only say, but do. Oh, we all do. Yeah, there's a little gym upstairs there. I under, I've heard about that. And I have two sets of exercises for all eight days, and every day of the week. Oh, that's great. And I finish the day with a little time of community.